Okay, boys, here we go for a, another leadership lesson. As you can tell, we're not in the normal environment I film in. This is a lesson from the real world. We just had a really cool adventure. Uh, this is my buddy JB, and uh, we're down here in Puerto Rico on a 45-foot catamaran sailing around for Thanksgiving, and we just had a little bit of an emergency. So we're on the boat. Uh, it's a bare boat that we chartered and they didn't have the anchor set up right so the way that you anchor a big boat like this is you put out a big old heavy anchor but what keeps the boat anchored is not the anchor it's all the chain that is attached to the anchor so we were putting out all our chain and we were in relatively deep water for anchoring so we had 188.3 feet of chain out and the reason i know that it was exactly 188.3 is that uh, the chain is supposed to be attached to the boat and it wasn't so it just went out the end of the boat and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. So now we're stuck with no anchor, no chain, and uh, we're in the middle of the night. So uh, we had to uh, go in the water, and you know I just saw it as another SEAL mission. So we jump in the water, have to swim out uh, about 100 yards away from the boat, swim out away, away from where we thought we were gonna be. Again, this is the middle of the night, so it's pitch black. Uh, and we had no idea how deep it was. We knew it was about 30 feet, maybe a little bit more. So I had to dive down to the bottom and then run perpendicular on the bottom of the, the ocean at about 35 feet uh, until we ran into the chain. Once we ran into the chain, tied a, a little rope to it, attached to a buoy. Then I'd have to go down the chain 35 feet, untie the rope, swim on the bottom along the chain, chasing the train, tie it back in, when I needed to get some air, swim 35 feet back up to get some breath, uh, rinse and repeat about, about 30 40 times. times. Yeah, 40 times. At, by the end of the chain, we're in 42 feet of water, so it's quite deep. Uh, swim down the pitch black 42 feet, untie that rope, go to the end of the chain, tie it down, uh, tie in another rope, and we could actually yank the chain back onto the boat. So, uh, leadership lesson here is all about problem solving. You know, one of the key parts to leadership is, as we always talked about, is creating an environment where others make the right choices. Now, a lot of times you get into situations where that environment isn't something that you control, right? We didn't control the fact that the boat was set up wrong. We didn't control the fact that the anchor, the thing that could keep us still, was off the boat. We didn't control the fact that it was nighttime, it was pitch black, the depth, where the chain was. Uh, the equipment we had to retrieve, right? No scuba equipment, any of, anything like that. And that starts leading us into a situation where you have to, on the fly, make up solutions to problems. And one of the big things about leadership is being able to effectively get things done, right? The more effective you are getting things done, the more often someone is going to see your effective nature and, and follow that, which is one of the purest forms of leadership. So one of the things that leaders do is have to come up with solutions to complex problems in real time. The quicker you can do that, the more effective you can be at that, the more effective you are at solving these situations. What's interesting is you have a former Navy SEAL, right? My problems were all people trying to kill me in very bad places. So in that environment, I got a lot of practice at being able to look at a situation and come up with solutions uh, very quickly. So my buddy JB here is not, not a, Navy SEAL. a former Navy SEAL, as you can tell by the physique. <laughs> <laughs> but what he is, is an engineer, especially an engineer that, that invents things. And so when in your world, your domain, do you do the same thing, not? Same thing all the time. I uh, usually, without the same timeline, but it's the same game. The faster we can innovate, the more valuable we are and the more we get paid or uh, the more value we produce for our customers. And so. in, those, what, in those environments you said innovate, what does that mean for you? Uh, for me, it's, it's I think fundamentally the same thing as fixing an anchor. There's a problem that, uh, that arises and uh, the innovation is pairing uh, oftentimes already existing technologies, processes, uh, what have you, to this new problem in a way that gets it done uh, as fast as it can get done. And so, like, that thing, right, the, the, th the ability of being able to see and use tools that aren't used for 
the new solution, right? That's the innovation. Here, what did we use for our buoy? We had a dry bag that we just blew full of air. And yeah, so a dry bag is meant to keep to water out of something, right? It's not meant to be a buoy, but it was Became easy to a be buoy able to tell. Like, oh, okay, yeah. let's just take this back, turn it into a buoy. Uh, we had some of, line ra laying around that was yeah. seemed suitable. Right, I didn't have a di we didn't have dive lights, so I took one of our my tactical flashlights, right? A Which flashlight that meant for the surface, yeah. but because it's it was a, a hardened thing, like oh, we can use this in the bottom for sure. Right? The the idea of of coming up with well how are we going to find this chain in the bottom of the ocean right there's all sorts of existing search patterns but they're generally meant to find one thing like a person or uh, a specific item we had a big long chain so if we were to do any of the normal patterns like a box pattern or a circle pattern we would have had it done twice the work or more or wow. more to try and find it whereas we know we have this 188 foot line right innovating a new search pattern what's the least amount of effort we have to put in to get the highest return you know we knew that hitting it at an angle is going to be better or directly perpendicular to it, it's going to be easier and better than trying to do a circle or a square or a diamond any of the normal search patterns right so a couple lessons here first lesson is you don't control the environment in any in any situation you're in which is fine uh, if you don't control the environment, you have to be good at problem solving. Like anything else, this takes practice, skill, uh, and training, right? The more you know, the more you practice problem solving, the more experience you gain problem solving, the more effective you're gonna get at it. That's why I love problems, right? Problems are, to me, not a problem, but an opportunity, an opportunity to innovate, to come up with a better solution than someone else. Uh, the other thing is being able to use everyday items that you might not necessarily apply to it simply by understanding their purpose and their function as opposed to what they actually are, uh, being able to do that. And the last piece is having fun doing it, doing it, right? Being able to do it with my buddy in the water. There's no one else who would have rather been out in the freezing cold water, in the pitch black. No one else would have been out with it. Yeah, that's a valid point too. Cold water. <laughs> so with all of that, hopefully there's some good lessons here. And if anyone wants to go sailing, uh, you only get to come if you're willing to go die for the chain, so I don't have to do it again. Uh, with that, hopefully you enjoy this. See you next time.